What happens when we become roots bound, which is a gardening term. And this can happen in all kinds of aspects in our life and we don't even know that we are root bound. And we don't know even know how long we have been root bound. And so you can be root bound in your home, your marriage, your job, your career, and also in your ministry and in um, who you are following, who you are sitting under as far as leadership goes, you can be root bound. And root bound is when a plant outgrows the pot it's in. And so the roots all begin to get just compacted at the bottom of the pot where they don't have any room any longer to to stretch out, uh, basically to stretch out and fly and spread their wings. And so the plant doesn't do well. After a while, you know, with a root bound plant, if you water it, there's no way for the water to drain because all of those roots are just matted up and squished all together at the bottom. And I think a lot of us, have become root bound in many areas because why? Well, it's comfortable. So we've been doing it so long that that's just what we do. And so I would say right now is a time to rethink what you're root bound in. And a lot of people <clears throat> were leaving Christianity and headed to Hebrew roots. Well, that was probably a season in your life and one where you really did need to learn the roots of your faith, more about the feast, the Sabbath, what have you. But what if after a few years, you're just becoming stagnant, you're not growing anymore? Um, I would say find some teachers that challenge you, that make you think outside of the box and ask yourself questions like, why, why am I only reading the Torah portions? Um, you know, maybe a snippet or a couple passages from the newer portion of my Bible, but mostly every week it's Torah portion, Torah portion. Well, <clears throat> Have you ever researched the origin of when the Torah portions began? Um, one place to really research is the um, Haftarah, the prophets that are read. And a lot of you know that Yeshua went into the temple and he read from the scroll from the book of Isaiah the prophet. But you won't find that in the cycle that the uh, rabbi rabbinical Judaism uses or the Jews use weekly, you won't find Yeshua's reading. Um, also, you won't find a lot of the passages that are proof texts of the Messiah in the prophets. You won't find them, them read because the Jews have very carefully removed them. I would also ask yourself if, you know, when's the last time you just sat down and read the book of Acts or meditated on the Gospels for the week? You just decided to study, you know, John or Mark or really dig in again to what Yeshua was saying to the leadership and to the Torah scholars. And also... You know, being root bound, many times what happens is we're just comfortable. And I would say find some teachers that challenge you. Find some teachers that scare you. Find some topics you haven't dug into. And, you know, as I'm researching for um, my next two book releases, I've been finding some academic scholarly teachers I didn't know existed. And... 
I'm learning new things. And so I would also say, I would also say be careful if you're sitting under someone that doesn't want you to spread your roots out and grow and get freedom because a lot of times teachers don't even realize it because they worry about others and they don't want them learning lies or they're afraid if they go somewhere else, they may not learn or they may get caught up in something false and they may even warn you that, you know, if you don't know Hebrew, you're really not going to be able to study your Bible. Well, I would say that I was studying the King James Version of the Bible in the early 2000s when the Father was revealing to me who Satan or Hasatan was and was pointing out many things. And it just took me a few years to do the um, scholarly research, the historical research, look at everything in context. But he was already revealing to me and, you know, the words of Yeshua, many times, yes, he is calling out the, the leadership of his time, the corruption, and he's using parables. He's using things from their oral traditions. Um, some of the people that a lot of scholars quote, you know, if you've never studied the Mishnah or the the Talmud or a lot of these other writings, um, you might be surprised what you find in there. Not everything is, is pretty. I'll just say that. But uh, I think that when we get to the point where we feel like we know everything or we have the best teachers there's a lot of teachers out there you don't have to just stay with one teacher it's okay to stretch those roots out a little bit and explore and ask questions you don't have to ask them to anyone ask them to yourself you know when is the last time that i skipped a torah portion reading and just sat down and meditated on the book of Acts. When's the last time I didn't feel guilty because um, I forgot to say the Shema or I forgot to count the Omer one day? You know, I see people getting involved in a lot of these things. And honestly, when we are counting the Omer, or the Omer, or the, however you want to pronounce it. When we are counting up to Pentecost or Shavuot, we're counting up to something that's already happened. The Holy Spirit's already been poured out. So, if, let's say that you or your wife became pregnant, and you go to the doctor, and the doctor says, um... From what I can tell, it looks like your baby's going to be born, you know, January 13th. So, you and your spouse go home. You're looking at the dates. You're trying to prepare a room, name this baby, get everything it needs. And yes, you're going to be counting up. Counting up to the date of the birth of this beautiful child. But are you going to do that every year? No, you're just going to be looking and, oh, yeah, you know, little Tammy's birthday is coming up in January. You you already have the child. The child is already there. So, we already have the Holy Spirit. We So, it's sort of like Passover. Yeshua is the Passover lamb. Um, are we going out and trying to find a spotless lamb that we're going to sacrifice. No, because there is no temple. And also, the Messiah has already came. And so, 
Ask yourself if there's more that you're missing from these feast days. If you dig in deeper, I think you're going to be really blown away by all the hidden layers, not just what, um, not just what we're doing as far as Oh, today's 29 days. Today's, you know, and some people can't even agree on that. You know, they're going to argue about that. And so, what about the Ruach? What about the Holy Spirit that was poured out? Shouldn't that be our focus? And are we walking and being led by a spirit? And so, I just wanted to discuss these things with you today because sometimes... A job becomes comfortable, so we just keep going to it. A marriage becomes comfortable, and in no way am I saying get a divorce, but you might need to get a bigger pot, some potting soil, some nutrients, seek counseling. You know, maybe you've lived in your house forever, and maybe there's bad memories there. Maybe one of your loved ones died in that house. Maybe you were divorced in that house and still have things of your exes in the house. You know, I would say sometimes being root-bound, we need a wake-up call. It's time to uproot and be replanted somewhere where we can thrive and grow and get freedom. So, hope this has blessed you all. Bye-bye.